Liberty are out to their best start since 2007. Monday's win over an explosive Dallas Wings team made Benajah Laney, who is a walking bucket and former member of the Atlanta Dream, the team she's playing today as you see her renewing some acquaintances with them. Sabrina Ionescu, she's been providing excitement, calling her own number or facilitating for her teammates. And this afternoon, this young Liberty team will have their hands full trying to slow down a barrage of stellar Atlanta backcourt pieces led by second-year point guard Kennedy Carter and six-year vet Courtney Williams. We thank you for joining us for basketball on a Saturday afternoon as the Yes Network proudly presents New York Liberty basketball as the Liberty take on the Atlanta Dream at Barclays Center alongside Julianne Viani brain I am Chris Sheeran and Jules, there are now three absolutes, death, taxes and Benajah Laney getting 20 or more in a ball game. <laughs> Straight buckets. That's what we keep calling her, Benajah Buckets. What does it she do? She has been so consistent day in and day out and such a pleasure to watch. Honestly, we talk so much about Sabrina Ionescu and that's a good thing because Sabrina's a great player, but she's got some help and this has been Laney's incredible season. She's the first player in Liberty history to score 20 plus points in the first six games to open the season. There is no one playing better than this young woman right now. She's been instant offense, reliable every single day. She's playing with such a confident demeanor, that chip on her shoulder and really stamping herself as a star in this league. Yeah, and that chip was planted there, getting cut by the Indiana Fever, then being in the bubble with the Atlanta Dream last season. You can see what she's doing here. She is a bucket, as that graphic says. Now, there was some bad news for the New York Liberty on Monday when Natasha Howard was injured against the Dallas Wings. The medical report came out. She had a sprained MCL in her knee, Jules. But the good news is the Liberty have been here before without Tosh, and Kylie Shook has been doing a great job. She has. I mean, from day one, she has been their forward in the middle, and she's really stepped up big this season. And without Howard, this puts more pressure on Shook to do a little bit more. And I've been very impressed with how well she's fit into Walt Hopkins' system this season she's grown a ton since her rookie year she's had to c cover some of the best bigs in the WNBA we look at her offense in a lot of these reels and boy she can knock down the three but that defense has been very key for this team remember when she was in college she was ACC defensive player of the year and she led them in blocks so she's got to continue to do both sides of the court like that you could see when Natasha Howard was back in the last two games her minutes came down and her uh, numbers came down significantly, but the point here is Shook has been making moves on the defensive side of the ball for Walt Hopkins, and she'll have to continue that today against a very tough Atlanta Dream Team. We talked about Kennedy Carter and Courtney Williams. Well, how about Tiffany Hayes, too, Jules? Well, she's coming off two huge 26-point performances, and as she goes, this team goes, Chris. She is a true veteran and a dream lifer. Not only is her offensive efficiency pivotal to what this team does, but her ability to lead a team with a lot of new faces will play a big role in how successful this season is. This is a very versatile young woman, and it's good to see her back on the court. Yeah, and back on the court and back on top in points on her team this season, averaging nearly 18 points per game to go along with Courtney Williams, just over 17, and Kennedy Carter near 16 and a half points. Three players with 15 or more points, the only WNBA team this season that sports those numbers. All right, we're about set for tip off for here at Barclays Center. The Liberty are looking for their best start since 2004 when they started six and one. A win today would give them that same mark. Can they get it done? Find out next right here on Yes. New York Liberty basketball on Yes is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. More ways to win. We are back here at Barclays Center for afternoon basketball on a Saturday, a chilly afternoon here in Brooklyn as we take a look at the starting lineups between the Atlanta Dream and the New York Liberty. It's Tiffany Hayes, Tiana Hawkins, Elizabeth Williams, Courtney Williams, and Kennedy Carter. Carter for Mike Peterson's squad. Benajah Laney, Michaela Onyenwede, Kylie Shook, Sammy Whitcomb, and Sabrina Ionescu will go for Walt Hopkins. And looking at these lineups, Jules, 
You go back to 2017, and you have to notice the turnover of these rosters for both of these squads and the jobs they're doing right now as we take a look at head coach for Atlanta, Mike Peterson. He is the interim head coach. Of course, Nikki Collin left to take over the Baylor job when Kim Mulkey went to LSU. And Peterson and his squad have won their last three games. So he's out to a three and two start. Walt Hopkins out to a great start with his New York Liberty. They are five and one this season. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, a win today would give the New York Liberty their best start since 2004 matching that squad's six and one start to the season but as i was saying jules the turnover for these teams has been tremendous and with that there's a challenge chris i mean you've got to get used to the way things are in a new setting new coaching staff too and a lot of new faces and you look at the dream and they've got they've had even more changes in their in their staff Tiffany Hayes, Elizabeth Williams. They're the only two leftovers from that 2017 season, along with Beck Allen and Kia Stokes for the New York Liberty. And we're off here in Brooklyn at Barclays Center. Atlanta controls the tip. They lost their first two games of the season, did the dream, dropping their opener to the sun and then the next one to the sky, but they have won their last three and a nice look inside from Tiffany Hayes to Elizabeth Williams, and they break the ice. Oh, that was tremendous right off the start. I think you're going to see a lot of dribble penetration and pitching. Two teams with a lot of great guards that can break it down. Left Kylie Shook wide open for that three. She was two of four from downtown before that miss. Michaela Onyanwede tries the corner, no good. Liberty 0 for 2 to start the game, and Atlanta back in business. New York's had quite a bit of a break here for a few days since their last game, which they were playing lots of games in a row to start the season. Six games in the first 11 days of the season as Tiana Hawkins gets that to go. So a bit of a respite, which was well-deserved for this New York Liberty squad. Nice look inside from Laney to Shook, but she can't hit the bunny. Here comes Courtney Williams, but her pass picked off by Sammy Wickham. We've been seeing that all season, Jules. Sammy Wickham has been involved on both ends of the floor, and you see there <laughs> back cue. to back. She's been one of my favorite players to watch for New York. I mean, she's just played with so much grit and veteran fire. Extremely fundamentally sound. That's how I describe Wickham. Courtney Williams tries the wing and she connects boy jewels. Courtney Williams has a quick trigger and she can hit from anywhere on the floor as Kennedy Carter intercepts that pass, but she goes out of bounds. And Sammy Wickham here does a nice job just getting in the passing lane, poaching, great job, turning her head. And then this leads to a bucket at the other end. Best time to knock down that three when the defense is scrambling. Nobody picked her up. I mean, she's just like, okay, I'll take it guys. <laughs> You got to find her in transition if you are the Atlanta Dream. Three wide open looks so far for the Liberty. And Wickham was the only one to knock it down. It's Kylie Shook working on Tiffany Hayes, but she gets it to Michaela Onion Wade. Laney stops and pops at the free throw line, and she'll head to the free throw line after she gets fouled there. Looking to have her seventh straight game, Jules, with 20 or more points to start the season is Laney. Yeah, very impressive to start. I mean, 2020 WNBA most improved player. We've talked about that. And, of course, the year before that, she was cut. I mean, her story is one of the best in the league. And we just can't reiterate that enough because she has just continued to be consistent. It wasn't a fluke season last year. Not at all, and she's proving that this season for sure. Coming in today, she was fourth in the WNBA in points per game as Carter stops and pops and drops. And right now, Atlanta's getting whatever they want on the offensive end. I mean, have they missed yet? They've been pretty solid. Atlanta four or five from the field as Ionescu gets blitzed on the sideline. Kennedy Hollywood Carter right here. She's 
one of college basketball's full former college basketball's big studs. Fourth overall in the 2020 draft. On Yenway Day, no good from three, but the long rebound comes out to Yonescu, 14 to shoot. Laney thought about the baseline, cut off there by Hawkins, and then blocked by Hawkins. Great work on the defense there, but active hands once again by Sammy Wickham, and it goes off Williams, and it'll be Liberty Ball. And those are those little things that we see Sammy Wickham doing. We see here, Laney takes this shot. Nice block here, of course. You gotta be careful with that basketball. And Hawkins is so athletic, but they get the ball back. We've seen this too, the blitzing Sabrina Ionescu. Dallas tried that, now Atlanta's trying it. They pay for it. Ball swung around to Wickham and she drills it. And that's the way New York works. And that's when they're at their best. Swinging the ball around, getting a lot of touches. You double team someone, you better believe that Ionescu and company are gonna find you. Nice look inside to Shook. She gives it up to Laney, outside to Onion Wade. And she connects from downtown. Liberty all of a sudden on fire. You get a stop, a stop or two, it's leading to offense. There's not just one head of the snake on this Liberty team. There are multiple players who can do it, and that's the versatility that Walt Hopkins talked about. We're seeing it in living color right now as Elizabeth Williams is able to work her way inside. But that's to your point, Jules, how you could double someone, but there's gonna be someone else that's gonna hurt you. The Liberty have a lot of offense. They have a lot of weapons, and it's fairly positionless. Nice take inside by the rookie out of UCLA, and the Liberty have a three-point lead. Carter stopped by Shook, but she gets to go high off glass. Feverish pace to this one. Both these teams are going to want to run the basketball. Guard-oriented. The pace is strong in these teams. This time on the floor is Kennedy Carter. He's going to get called for the foul on Onion Wede. So Kennedy Carter picks up the foul, her first, the team second. Quite a story for Carter, too. Her godfather was taken by the Atlanta Hawks. That would be the Jet Jason Terry as Onion Wede takes the three and doesn't get that one to fall. And then she gets drafted by the Atlanta Dream last season. Comes in second place in the Rookie of the Year voting. <laughs> Absolutely, as she hits the jumper there. Short mid-range J for Carter. She could do it from anywhere, Jules. Yeah, she's terrific. I mean, she's one of those players that you can't guard in one way because she is a three-dimensional scorer. Sabrina creates some space for herself. No good. Good work on the offensive glass by Onion Wade. Pass out to Wickham. Liberty being patient here. Five to shoot. Laney has to pull. Can't get that to fall. And an offensive foul. And a timeout. We're going to step aside. Liberty trailing by one with just under five minutes to play in the first. You know, it's really frustrating. Um, she was not even in rhythm and, and putting up great stats and really helping the team in so many ways. I mean, I was just looking at our deflections from last game, and she was tied for the lead, and, you know, she played 20 minutes, I think. Um, she just does so many things. So we're going to miss her. Walt Hopkins there on Natasha Howard, who, of course, was injured against the Dallas Wings on Monday. Hey, go ahead, Julie. Yeah, and it's interesting you said she wasn't even in her rhythm yet. Yeah. And I was kind of saying that as well throughout those first couple games that we saw her back. And yet she did add a lot to the, to the team and what she was doing. A lot of those little things will be missed. As Carter goes in for the easy layup there, but you have to remember, she came back and the Liberty had a back to back, so she didn't even have time to practice with them as Whitcomb misses there. And to have her not be in rhythm and to fill up the box score the way she did, as Walt said, his words, it sucks to not have her. But players like Kylie Shook, players like Kia Stokes, they're going to have to step up, and Shook did that at the beginning of the year, as you see. Natasha Howard on the bench. And that confidence for Kylie Shook is there because of that. I mean, they, the team has that confidence to know, hey, we can do what's necessary without Howard, and they're going to adjust pretty easily for that reason. So 
Um, yes, unfortunately, they will miss her, but she'll be back. She'll be back. Hawkins wins the jump opportunity there with Wickham. And I think another thing is Kia Stokes is going to have to really step up and give some offense as well, where she has struggled a little bit. And it's going to be a team effort interiorly. Tiffany Hayes gives Atlanta an 8-0 run. And they now lead by five. Benajah Laney tries to get the offense going. Another blitz there by the Dream. Leaves Michaela Onyewede free. And she is blocked there by Monique Billings. Good defense there by Billings. Doesn't hesitate. And can I say something about Courtney Williams? Sure. She is the best mid-range shooter in the WNBA. I mean, she's proven it. She, I remember watching her in college thinking that as well in the college game, but she has proven it time and time again that in the WNBA, you can't let her shoot the mid-range jay. You've got to go over top of that screen. You can't drop under the screen because she's going to knock it down. And then at the other end, great defense by Billings, who has been tremendous in that department for the Atlanta Dream to start this season. Defensive three seconds was called against the Dream, but Sabrina Inescu misses the free throw. Inescu came into today a 90% free throw shooter. Misses that one. You mean she's allowed to miss once in a while? Well, you know, <laughs> they are humans. Nice. They're not robots. And she makes up for it with the bullet pass inside the Kia Stokes. Now Odyssey Sims into the game and sets up Billings. Nice post move inside. Billings has some really, really great footwork in her ability. And I love what Coach Peterson said about her. When she comes in the game, it is palpable. It has help, is what he said. Yes. You can feel it. Beck Allen needs to really get going. Came in five for 22 from the field since coming back from Europe. Now she's five for 23 as Billings gets the shot to fall and she's fouled. And the Dream building this lead over New York. And somehow in transition, Sabrina Ionescu got stuck on Billings and this is not a good matchup for her. And Billings noted it, went to the hole, did what she needed to do. And that's what Coach Peterson means by you can feel it when she comes in the game. And she has been tremendous. Coming off a nice game, 10 points, 11 boards against Dallas on Thursday. Well, Hopkins coaching up Benajah Laney there. The Dream, 12 for 12 on two-point attempts. 0 for 3 from downtown. And they enjoy a nine-point advantage over New York. Jazz Jones into the game for Sabrina Ionescu. They've got 18 points in the paint, Chris. That's, that's a lot of points in the paint to start the game to just four from New York. Dee Dee Richards also in there with Kia Stokes, Beck Allen, Jazz Jones, and Benai Jelani. That was Crystal Bradford trying a three. No good. The talent for this Atlanta team comes in waves, just like it does for Walt Hopkins' Liberty Squad. Same thing for Mike Peterson. Bad pass there by Jazz Jones. Tiffany Hayes gets it inside to Billings. Turnaround jumper is good over Stokes. I think Billings is going to be a matchup nightmare here for New York because she is somebody who's worked really hard at her face-up game. Not only can she back up, back you down, and have her back to the basket, but boy, she can face up. 2018 fifth overall pick, getting it done so far. And off the bench for Mike Peterson. Started in the bubble last year, did Billings, but coming off the bench now. As Hayes comes up with air there, but good hands by Sims. Come up with the steal on Jazz Jones. Now a whistle. That's something with the clock they're looking at here. It reset. That is indeed what is going on, the shot clock reset when it shouldn't have on the air ball. So the officials will put their heads together. Randy Richardson, Tony Patillo, and Tim Green try to figure this out. Liberty trailing by 11, just over a minute to play here at Barclays Center on this chilly 
late May Saturday afternoon in Brooklyn. Unseasonably Yes. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Billings misses the jumper there. Now Laney looks to push. Laney, spin. Oh, good look inside. But Kia Stokes not ready for that pass. Now that's a good look. I mean, you, you got to make that pass. It just was a little off, and Stokes wasn't quite ready for it. You're right. Looked like she stopped, and Laney thought she was going to keep going. Nice curl cut. See, that's what Courtney Williams does so well, too. She moves without the basketball when she doesn't have it in her hands. You've got to disallow what I call those are belly cuts. Cuts right across the belly in the middle. Laney, nice turnaround off glass, and she gets it to go. They made her work for her shots, though. Atlanta doing a tremendous job on the defensive side of the ball, making Sabrina Inescu uncomfortable, Benajia Laney uncomfortable. And that is a walk on Thornton Williams. Thought she was fouled, thought she could draw the contact, but it is a travel. Good defense by Kia Stokes. She didn't move, she didn't budge, she kept her body in the right position. run to end the first quarter. They lead 28 to 17. We'll have second quarter action when we come back right here on Yes. About to start the second quarter here at Barkley Center. Liberty trailing the dream by 11. Now, Jules, they've been coming hard at us with trivia yeah. all season long, and I have a feeling they're about to come at us hard again. Let's check it out. And fans, Liberty fans watching, if you have a guest, please go to social media, hashtag Liberty on Yes Trivia. Benajah Laney won the 2020 WNBA Most Improved Player Award as a member of the Dream, which four players won the award while playing for the Liberty. Wow, that's a good one. Uh, we got to get some interaction here from Twitter, please. I want to phone some a friend. Help. <laughs> I need some help because I am not the best at trivia. See, our producer, <laughs> Josh Isaac, doesn't give us the same who wants to be a millionaire things. You know, we can phone a friend. A 50-50 is an offensive foul called there on Beck Nowadays, Allen. text message a friend. <laughs> there you go. Meaning me or write me on Twitter. <laughs> Hit me up. Tiffany Hayes hit the deck hard there. And a good pass inside, and Hayes goes down pretty hard there. <laughs> Tiffany Hayes, who started the season out a little slower, first couple of games has really gotten hot lately. Good defense by Kia Stokes, taking the angle away from Carter there. And after the offensive foul started the second quarter, Good defense by Stokes there for the Liberty, and now a foul on Hayes. Well, Hopkins keeping the same lineup together to start the second quarter that ended the first. These are his spark I like to call them his spark plugs. Right. Dee Richards, Jazz Jones, and that ball goes off of Benajah Laney. Tight defense being played here by the Atlanta Dream. Boy, after dropping their first two games to the sun and sky, Mike Peterson has his team balling. And, you know, and turnovers have been an issue for New York, as we've talked about throughout the season. And they're going to have to be able to handle the physical guard play of Atlanta. So it's a very talented team. Good D again by Stokes, but this one goes out on her. Seven seconds to shoot here. For Atlanta, you brought up turnovers, Jules. The Dream are scoring over 21 points off their opponent's turnover. Uh, that's what they need out of Kia Stokes. I mean, Stokes didn't even have to jump that high there. She just had to be in the right position. And she got a piece of it. Carter tries the lane, and off of her, Dee Dee Richards with the good D. Excellent defense, and you, didn't want, you did not want to give up a bucket at that point in the shot clock. Two seconds left on the clock, great stop. Those are the things Dee Dee Richards does when she comes in, and Coach Hopkins talks about it. Lane knocks another one down. The walking bucket was the jumping bucket there. Jump shot just beyond the foul line for Laney, and good D, Spida with the long arms. 
She's running the floor with Richards. Now New York will slow things down. Richards gets it knocked away by Odyssey Sims, the seasoned vet with the poke away. If Tiffany Hayes can't get it to go, but it's off Rebecca Allen. Benigel Laney does a nice job here with a, a hard cut. That mid-range shot makes it look so smooth. She's got to keep moving without the basketball. Hayes with a corner three, no good. Beck Allen with another rebound, and Ionescu and Laney. Top two scores for this Liberty team. Ionescu's got to find her rhythm, too, and get herself going, and maybe get to the foul line, get some points manufactured there. Dream doing a great job on the perimeter, extending their defense, making all the Liberty players uncomfortable. And Beck Allen gets her pocket picked there by Crystal Bradford, and she connects on the three. Oh boy, did Bradford make that one look easy. She just had her hands feisty and ready and moving. A little push shot there from Ionescu, doesn't fall, and then Billings steps on the end line. This is where you really got to protect the ball. You can't dribble it. You can't cross the ball over right in front of you. You've got to actually pass it back to yourself and stay a little bit lower when you have a player of that caliber on you. Just pick their pocket. Only starter not on the floor right now for New York is Kylie Shook. It's Courtney Williams checking back into the game. So it's Stokes, Ionescu, Whitcomb, Laney, and Onion Wede for the Liberty. Liberty shooting just 31% from the field to start this game, and a travel call there on Kia Stokes. The Dream shooting just under 58%, 15 for 26. Liberty trying to win their first four games at home for the first time since 2013 and the fifth time in franchise history, but they have an uphill battle ahead of them right now, down by 12 to the Atlanta Dream. And they've come out a little flat, and I mentioned that they had a few days off from playing in, in games. Now they've been practicing, but I think that's one of the things that Walt Hopkins in pregame talked about, being a little nervous about just having that time off. Will you come out flat? And they have come out a little flat in this first half. And partner, you talk about the turnovers. Nine turnovers for the Liberty, just seven field goals. So they have two more turnovers than they have field goals. And that's the kind of stuff that leads to easy baskets at the other end. But it's also just giving possessions up. You are losing a possession every time you turn it over. And this counts as a turnover, too. This is an offensive foul. Lane does stick her arm out pretty, pretty far in Billings' face. No, uh, no complaint there by Laney. She knew she committed the foul there. Tend to shoot here for the dream. Carter loses the handle. Onion Wade going one on two and takes it in and puts it in. Onion Wade needs to get more opportunities because she is super efficient. When she gets a shot, she makes it. I think it's going in every time. As Odyssey Sims, foul line extended, knocks down the jumper, and the lead is back to a dozen. Sims coming over from the Minnesota Lynx has a lot of experience. She was the 2014 second pick by the Tulsa Shock, was Sims. Good job here by Michaela Onyanwede, just not even hesitating and taking an at two red jerseys with the finish. In transition, Ken York gets some offense in the half court setting. Onion Wade started all six games for the Liberty so far. Stokes gets it to roll in. That was a great seal. Kia Stokes can use her body like that more often to get some isolation plays in the paint. They need that out of her. Courtney Williams, again, you cannot leave her wide open. She will hit those shots all day long if she's left open. She's got the prettiest stroke. I mean, she really doesn't miss often. So efficient. Nice look inside, but Stokes tried to put it on the floor. A blocking foul called, though, on the dream. 
Uh, you gotta love the back and forth affair here. And how about this for Kia Stokes? A great seal needs a little bit more of that from her. But on the other side, Courtney Williams is red hot and Atlanta continues to push the lead. Tomorrow night, watch NBA playoff basketball on. Yes, don't miss Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets battle the Boston Celtics in game four of their first round playoff series. Pre-game coverage starts at 6.30 on Yes and streaming on the Yes app. Nets lost last night up in Boston in game three. Jason Tatum went off, scored 50 points. Now that was incredible. <laughs> Can't imagine he'll get 50 again, but he needs to get 50 to beat the Nets again, I'll tell you that. That's his second time he scored 50 in the playoffs. As the officials are gonna look at this one, Jules, a replay of the Michaela Onion Way Day drive and basket. Kevin Durant, James Harden, they combined for 80 points. 80 points. Nets lose 125-119. Here's another look. And they're looking at the shot clock here. Yeah, the shot clock, you see it lit up before she got it off. I think they're checking the foul thing here as well. It might have been that another official called a walk. And they're just looking to see if she did walk. Along with the shot clock. Uh, and the shot clock, too. And from that look there, it looks like she did not get the shot off in time. Right, it, it doesn't, especially in terms of the lights going off. It was a great move, though. Just took too long. A little hop through. All right, they're checking the 24-second violation, Jules, and they're also checking to see if there was a foul before the shot. And there might have been a, a, a bump on the penetration. Yeah, that's, that's what we thought. That's interesting. And they're scoring the goal. And they're scoring the goal, which is weird because it's the, like continuation. <laughs> there you go. So the foul was before, you're right, the foul was before the shot clock went off. So, yes, continuation. She'll take it. <laughs> and that cuts the Atlanta Dream lead down to 10. As Sims skip pass to Ari McDonald. And she drills it, the rookie. We haven't gotten a chance to talk much about Ari, but she's in the game now and, of course, created so much buzz this season in college basketball. Pac-12 player of the year for Arizona. Great ball movement by the Liberty. Sets up Onion Wade from the wing, and she knocks down the three. Continuing to light up the scoreboard, and they need that out of Michaela Onion Wade. They need that offense desperately. And then McDonald comes in the game, and she's confident, strokes it. Not rookie shy there. McDonald, the third overall pick by the dream after the Wings took the first two players this year, Charlie Collier and Awak Kawia. Courtney Williams baseline, Jay, no good. Liberty could get this into single digits. They've made their last four shots. Let's see if we can keep away from the broadcaster jinx here, Jules, that we always talk about. <laughs> it's a very real thing at times. <laughs> well, to fans, it is a, it is a living, breathing thing. <laughs> Onion Way Day. Oh! Doesn't happen, see? The ball movement for New York is what is creating those shots. I love the skip pass. Weak side board, good work by Williams, and she'll dribble out with 14 to shoot. Breaking down Wickham, gets space, but gets it out to Hawkins for a three. She can't connect. Some gang rebounding there by the Dream, but it's going to be kicked off of Hawkins' foot. 
You have to look at this ball movement from New York. I mean, this is why they're successful from distance. Terrific job passing here, and that the skip pass to Onion Wade. That is a nice look by Laney to find her rookie counterpart over there. And Onion Wade has been hot. She's got 16 points. She had 18 on opening night, which is her season and career high. She's two points away from that here with 3.25 left in the third. Get it to the hot hand, me. right? <laughs> yes, and they did, and she gets fouled. So she, with these two foul shots, could tie her season and career high. Looks like she's shaken up a little bit, though. But I love the assertiveness, and she's really feeling it. She's moving all over the floor. She's really quick off the bounce. And that's a great job, just drawing the contact and absorbing it. I don't know the complaint Elizabeth Williams had. That was a clear foul. Yeah, lots of physical contact there. Believe it or not, Atlanta is playing very physical, and that's one of their MOs. I mean, this is a physical team. And we've heard that from New York, too, from media day on, Jules, how this Liberty squad said teams are going to feel us on defense. I thought perhaps this game could be a little chippy. Yeah, oh yeah. And it could get there even more so in the second half. The rookie from UCLA, Onion Wade, has scored the last 11 points for the Liberty. And uh, to put the fire out, there's Courtney Williams. And she always does it. She has a way of putting the fire out and getting a bucket in appropriate and needed times. Onion Wade again, this time short. She was feeling it. Can't blame her for taking another one. This time, good ball movement by the Dream. Sets up Hayes in the corner. She goes off the top of the backboard, though. And here comes Sabrina Ionescu. And Hayes is a little flat here to start the game. That's Laney's range right there, Jules. She loves it right in the lane. Or right outside the lane, I should say. <laughs> You had to expect the corny comment from me at some point. Oh, of point. course, well, because I bring out the corn. It's my fault to everyone listening. Don't blame Jules. I am the corn king. Odyssey Sims, elbow jumper, in and out. How'd that not go down? Liberty just down by five. Nice move by Laney, creates space on the perimeter and a blocking foul called on Courtney Williams down low. And New York really inching their way back into this one. And a lot of that is because of Benajah Laney's offensive prowess, the pull-up jumper and finish. The Yes app is your official home for streaming your favorite teams on Yes from multiple streams to game highlights and even replaying big moments. You won't miss a single play wherever you go. Just take out your phone and scan the QR code on the screen. The Yes app is the only place to stream the Liberty on Yes, so download it today. You look at Laney here, and we're looking up at her stats. Nine points. She's got five assists, Chris. She's really looking to pass the ball, and, and they've been making it difficult for her on offense. But right. she's finding other people and still managing that 10 points here. That is a tremendous point out of you. They are blitzing both Laney and Ionescu, but they are finding their teammates, and their teammates are coming through just like Courtney Williams on the other side for the dream. And laterally, New York is struggling to stay with Williams, but most players do. I mean, she's one of the fieriest players in the league, just so quick. Liberty have 21 points here in the second quarter. Michaela Onyenwede has 13. And she gets her shot swatted there by Monique Billings. Tested her and failed, but Whitcomb with the active hands once again and sets things up for the Liberty on the offense. Laney gets inside and is fouled by Sims, so she'll head to the free throw line again. Liberty were six for 20 in the first quarter, Jules. Seven for nine here in the second. Michaela has four of those field goals. Yeah, they've really woken up a bit. I think it took a little time, and they're looking a little more smooth and in rhythm. 
And I like how Laney is attacking. She's gotten into attack mode. That's what taking what the defense is giving you does. You take what they're giving you. How could Ionescu break out here? She's played 15 minutes, Jules, no points, two rebounds, two assists. What does she have to do? Uh, that's what I would like to see her do is get to the rim. I said it earlier, try to attack, try to penetrate, get yourself to the foul line and manufacture points there and can develop that confidence. And if you're being collapsed upon, just like she normally does, kick it out, find people. She's averaging close to 18 points per game and she has no points here with under a minute to play in the first half. And she has the ball now, looking to get the liberty within this three-point deficit. And Courtney Williams is on Sabrina Ionescu, and she is all over her. Little hesitation, but Onion Wade again from downtown. She is four for eight from distance. And that bench loves it. And Michaela just getting it done today. Dee Dee Richards, her biggest cheerleader on the bench as Elizabeth Williams quiets the crowd with a turnaround lefty hook. And how often have we said to start the season that the coaching staff of Wall Hopkins and company, they've all said that Michaela onion Wade has been a pleasant shooting surprise. Nice look inside, great cut by Whitcomb. Lady finds her, it's her sixth assist, and it's tied once again at 45. 10 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Carter cuts into the paint, lays it up and in. Oh, was she fast. And then a bad pass by Whitcomb, picked off by Williams. And Elizabeth Williams will head to the free throw line. So a bad sequence there for the New York Liberty to end this second quarter after they came all the way back from 13 down, Jules. Yeah, that was a tremendous job. I mean, getting it back, tying it, and then giving up a bucket at the end. And then the foul, certainly not what you want in terms of ending the half, but New York crawled back into this one, and that's impressive, and they really withstood an, an Atlanta dream run. I think they were up by about 12 at one point there. Came back. Williams makes the first coming up at the half. Take a closer look at Liberty CEO Kia Clark on Joy to the World, also breaking down the top players from the first half. I'm, I'm going to assume Michaela Onion Wade is part of that, Jules. I think so. As Williams makes both with 0.7 seconds left, and that'll do it here for the first half. The Liberty outscored the Dream 28 21 in the second quarter, and they trailed by as many as 13. They're only down by four. We're back with the halftime show right after after this on yes take a look at the leading scorers from the first half two apiece in double figures for both teams Michaela onion the rookie out of UCLA has a career high in one half 21 Benaja Laney just eight points shy of her usual 20 and it's Courtney Williams and Kennedy Carter leading the way for the dream let's get to trivia Jules now it worked we phoned a friend air quotes and it worked. Benaja Laney won the 2020 WNBA Most Improved Player Award as a member of the Atlanta Dream, which four players won the award while playing for the Liberty. Well, our friend Tracy J516 on Twitter helped us out here, Jules. Yeah, I'm so impressed. I mean, uh, we got a couple different. I got a direct message as well from somebody else. And, you know, I mean, they said it's Kia Vaughn. All right, Kia Vaughn's number one, Leilani Mitchell, Janelle McCarville, and Tari Phillips are your four. Oh, look at that. All right. Extra credit for Tracy J516. Watching along here with us on Yes, we appreciate you, Tracy. Yes, thank you so much. We you, always appreciate the help. You will be you will be <laughs> our phone a friend for the rest of the year on tri uh, tri uh, trivia. Uh, Jules, how about the second half here? And the first thing I have to bring up, Tiff Hayes, Sabrina Ionescu each averaging just under 18 points per game. Hayes has two points. Ionescu is scoreless. She's 0 for 3, while Hayes is 1 for 6 and 0 for 3 from downtown. I have a feeling, a sneaking suspicion, that might change for both players here. Right, I mean, I do too because they're both such excellent players in general. And, and other players have really stepped up for both teams though. I mean, you really look at that and, and that's a positive thing for both squads, but you're right. I expect to see them <laughs> guns a blazing. Nice look by Onion Wade and then 
Laney tried to get it to Shook, and that was broken up. So the Dream starting the second half the same way they started the first half, tenacious on the defensive side of the ball. I also look at Courtney Williams' numbers. I mean, not only was she scoring, but she's also one of the best rebounding guards in the league. And there's Hayes right on cue. Like we said, it's probably not going to stay the same. Onion Wade fakes the three. Got to respect her out there after her first half performance and lays it up and in. Great job there by the rookie out of UCLA. She's finding ways to get to the rim. And she's not just getting to the rim, though. She has made some from the perimeter, which has opened the lane up where she likes to go. Hayes once again. That's why I brought her up with Sabrina Ionescu. There she is. You had to know it wasn't going to last. Making herself known. Kylie Shook, her second attempt from downtown does not go. Well, you, you think about Tiffany Hayes, and in 2018, she turned into a superstar level. I mean, that was that was her season. And then Angel McCautry, her co-star, went down with injury, and she had a little bit of a, of a more difficult time after that in 2019. But this is a player who was like an, an absolute all-star throughout her career, scored 3,000 points. Well, let me know if this is any good news. Her high school and college career, Winter Haven High School in Florida and UConn, she was 264 and 16. Is that good? I'd say so. I'd say that's a pretty good win <laughs> winning statistic. Kennedy Carter blows by Sabrina Ionescu, lays it up and in. So the steal and the bucket, and Walt Hopkins wants to talk it over as this four-point lead has ballooned back up to nine for the Atlanta Dream. Less than two minutes into the third quarter as Hopkins talks it over, we'll step aside and take a break. We're back here and another turnover taken away by Kylie Shook. Sabrina Ionescu, does she get it going? She does. Ionescu with her first field goal of the game and the lead is cut back to six. They're listening in on our conversation coming into the half. She needed that in she the worst way. She needed it as a confidence booster big time. They need her to be more aggressive. And and Jules, I want to bring back your point from the first half on Michaela Onion way that she needs to be on the floor more. You're absolutely right. She needs to get touches, and, and that's the important part. She will be, and she's still out there because Walt can't take her off the floor right now. Leading scorer for the Liberty, just adding to her career high. She has 23. Hawkins thought about the three there, pulls it back. Courtney Williams on Kylie Shook, bit of a mismatch, no good. Just inside the three-point line. That's rare that you see Courtney Williams miss one from there. Ginescu tries again, no good too strong. She's leaning too far forward with that shot. She's got to set her body and just go straight up with it. Is that frustration a little bit, trying to get going, well, you're, forcing it? Your momentum and rhythm and, and pushing the ball by accident when you're pushing it up in transition like that. But she's got to just relax, play with poise. Wall Hopkins was not happy in that last time out, that turnover and the easy bucket by Carter. Yeah, because those turnovers definitely turned into some points for Atlanta. Atlanta leading the points in the paint battle, 30 to 16. They're back in there again with Elizabeth Williams, surrounded by three black jerseys, and she still scores. That's a good job by Williams, just staying with it. Williams is another vet. And Atlanta's been able to disrupt the pick and roll game by the Liberty so far. That's why UNESCO hasn't been able to get going as Laney tries to turn around and knocks it down. And Tiffany Hayes slow to get up there. You see they're, they're jumping that on ball screen. UNESCO is coming off of. They're jumping it hard or they're switching it hard, forcing her to pass out of it. Oh, that one brought rain from Carter. Can't get it to fall. Laney out to Shook. Shook again from the top of the key, and she drills the three this time. And the lead cut to.
to three. Elizabeth Williams has left Shook wide open the last couple possessions. Shook was makes a, her pay. Yeah, 38% three-point shooter in college. And she showed in the bubble, too, she could be a threat from downtown, and she's carried that over this season. Off the area that she's been most improved, Walt Hawkins said, is her three ball. Part of that New York tandem with Jazz Jones from Louisville, and we can't wait for Asia Durr to get healthy and get back wearing the sea foam as well. Laney spins into the lane, kicks it out to Whitcomb for three, and we are tied! Sammy Whitcomb! Sammy Whitcomb, so efficient. That we'll keep it here as they tie the game up on an eight nothing run, Jules. Yeah, you gotta really enjoy the play of Kylie Shook here, but Benaja Laney, who's playing like a point guard today, she's got, that's her ninth assist, folks. Laney with the dish out to Shook in the finish. Certainly the bench loving it, and of course, you gotta really love the play of Sammy Wickham. Wickham has been just tremendous, and she doesn't need a lot of time to get her shot off. Just great penetration, another pitch out to her. That's when New York is deadly. When you can get some good ball movement, when you can get some breakdown ability, the penetration game, the pitching, New York surrounds themselves. They're all good, good shooters. That's what Walt Hawkins' system entails. If you're a good shooter, you're gonna get looks on that floor. Fans, Thursday night on Yes, catch the next Liberty game as the Seafoam Green battle the Las Vegas Aces back here at Barclays Center. Coverage starts at seven on Yes, streaming on the Yes app as well. Can we talk about Jazz Jones for a second? After that three by Kylie Shook, she was on her back giving Nay Odom low fives with her feet. <laughs> you that's, called her that's the, pretty athletic. You called, you called her the spark plug, one of the spark plugs off the bench, her and Dee Dee Richards. And I remember vividly a shot of her in Chicago, too, in that game against the Sky where the Liberty came back like they're doing here today. They played Poison from Belle Biv DeVoe. You know I'm an old school guy. You are. And you Jazz know it. You was know it. Jazz was grooving to Belle Biv DeVoe. And you were very high. You were respecting that. Look at Jazz look, 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 down look, low. Look. <laughs> but that is the way she is. She has an energy about her, whether she's on the floor or, or not. She always has that energy. and. She brings it every single day. She might have gotten a little more time last year, but it was a slim bench. A lot of players were hurt, and she really took advantage of her season last year. She still brings that energy to today and in this season. Got to talk about Michaela Onion Way Day today, too. 8 of 15 from the field, 4 for 9 from deep. A perfect 3 for 3 at the line with 3 rebounds, leading the Liberty with 23 points right now. Three members of Walt Hopkins' squad in double digits. Onion Wade with 23, Laney with 14, and Whitcomb, who just hit that three with 11. The thing that we don't talk about enough about Onion Wade is she's also a terrific defender. Absolutely. She guarded Collier from Texas, you know, the number one pick in the nation. This was in college. She shut her down, and we've talked about that on the air before, but. That's why Walt Hopkins can also leave her on the floor. Tiffany Hayes just waved to the bench. She, she is hobbling. That was when she fell in the previous possession. And Kennedy Carter will come back and get her. But that's never a good sign when the player is actually asking out of the game, especially a player like Hayes. Yeah, she's limping a little bit. 10 seconds to shoot here for the Dream. Monique Billings gives it up for Carter. She loses the handle right next to Whitcomb, and that's going to go off Carter. Liberty ball, great job defensively, as the last Liberty lead was 13-12. They could retake an advantage here on this possession. And that ended up being the foul on Carter. Frustration foul, and Whitcomb just doing such a nice job. This is all starting on the defensive end, Chris. Sammy Whitcomb reminds me of a hockey player who's just an agitator, a really, really solid player, but she can get under the skin of the opposition. And she's doing that again here today. Bad pass there by Laney. Thought Onion Wade was gonna go the other way, and that's why that turnover happened. But what a job by Whitcomb. It seems like we're talking about her, especially on the defensive side of the ball. She fills it up in so many ways, Jules. She's a general, so you're pointing a lot. 
Courtney Williams comes up every time. Her middle name must be automatic. It really is. She's smooth like butter. Laney, baseline jumper, no good. Rebound to Crystal Bradford and right on cue again. Whitcomb with the steal, gets it to Laney and she is fouled by Bradford, goes down hard. As this crowd gets silent, because they know what Laney brings to the table for this team. Wiggum finds herself in the right place at the right time quite frequently. Nice job here by Laney, just getting in the lane, being open, making herself available. And that was Bradford just losing her equilibrium there and brought Laney down in the process. But every time something good happens for New York, it is because their defense has wreaked havoc, caused a problem. Nine assists here from Laney with 15 points. She's had quite a complete game. As you just mentioned, partner, now 16 points, nine assists. So she was getting guarded tenaciously on the offensive side of the ball, and she's been able to find her teammates. And that's what makes her deadly. And that's what makes this New York Liberty team five and one so far this season. And that's a tough shot. Crystal Bradford. Crystal Bradford, Bradford absolutely. In the corner. Oh, Whitcomb tried to give and go with Stokes, but Stokes lost her footing there. Now Billings resets, goes in, and she is fouled. And Bradford here gets the ball. Great job stealing off the defender. Turns and faces, and she's got some swag here looking back at the New York bench, trying to shut them up. But that's a tough shot. It's pretty good defense, but better offense. Liberty have a good bench mob. They must have been that's right. <laughs> chirping as she was taking that shot. First free throw for Billings, no good. The fifth pick in 2018 by the Dream. She helped UCLA to three straight Sweet 16s. And her teammate on those UCLA teams, Jordan Canada, in the Seattle Storm. She is a freakish athlete who can dunk. And she's done it before. She used to do it when she was at UCLA in practice. So I remember covering her in college. She can jump through the gym. How'd that go for you? Covering her? Oh, not literally covering her. Oh, oh you covered her. <laughs> covering right. her on the air. I'm a little too old. <laughs> see, I did that before Billings. the show with turnovers. <laughs> I can see why you would think that. <laughs> I would not have been matched up with her. I would have been matched up with a little guy. On a switch, maybe? <laughs> maybe. I would be yelling fire, though. That's what, we, that's what we called when we had a mismatch down low. It was fire. So the rest of the team knew to come help. It wouldn't matter who I cover, I'd just be screaming fire the entire game. <laughs> Rebecca Allen trying to get going. She can't get her jumper to fall. And Carter saves it before it goes out of bounds. 20 second timeout for the Atlanta Dream as they hold a three point lead over the Liberty with 2.21 left to go here in the third quarter. But Atlanta has done a good job maintaining this lead, even if it's ever so slightly. They have kept the lead. Now, you see Dustin Gray just in that shot with Walt Hopkins. And, and he talked, and Shelly Patterson we see as well. And Walt talked about his assistance. I thought it was so key for him in his, one of his last press conferences that he did. I think it was his post-game presser after the Dallas Wings game. And he said, my assistants carry me. And a couple of the reporters were asking about Dee Dee Richards and her shot. And he gave all the credit to his assistant coaches, Dustin Gray, Shelly P, and the work that they've been doing with Dee Dee Richards. We're talking about a player who didn't make a three in college and made her first three here at the professional level. So to have Walt Hopkins say that about his staff has to make them feel extremely good. Yeah, and you are who you surround yourself with, right? I mean, that is in any business that you work for or if you're a coach. And says a lot about Walt Hopkins. Oh, and Kennedy Carter is hurt. She is hurt. She is on the floor and hurt. Hate to see that. And we're going to get a timeout here. Mike Peterson adamant with agony. the official. Yes. Don't, I don't, I didn't see what happened. She went up. 
She's with Kylie, Sh uh, not Kylie Shook, excuse me, Kia Stokes. Grabbing her elbow. Maybe her shoulder or elbow, I don't know. It looks like it, looks like it could be really Dislocation, bad Dislocation, yeah. maybe? That's what it looks like, but we can't speculate. And she just comes down here. Could oh, it's when she the hit fall. the floor, yeah. She fell really hard on her, on her arm. Goodness, you hate to see that. Carter, such an electric player for the Atlanta Dream and yeah, so really good is. for the league, too. As Beck Allen takes Crystal Bradford and great defense there by Bradford as she gets the block. And Williams goes the other way, lays it up, no good. Jazz Jones with the board. Laney gets fouled there by Ari McDonald and the silence here is palpable with that injury. To Kennedy Carter, you still see her writhing in pain on the floor, the bench area. You never want to see that. No. I mean, no matter what, I mean, she went down so hard. You just hope that she's okay. That's all you can hope for. Now, Atlanta's going to have to just find the spunk without her on the floor right now. Laney tries a three, no good, too strong. And Rebecca Allen got sucked in there. Couldn't grab that rebound. Odyssey Sims stops from the elbow, and she's true. I'll tell you, Atlanta's got plenty of guards to choose from. Plenty of quick guards. This could be one of the quickest guard-oriented teams in the league. Not real big, I mean, from the guard perspective. Union Wade gets caught on the elbow. Jazz Jones. Picks it out to Allen. He's gonna pull the three and 24 second violation there. And it's funny you bring up how many guards they have because their head coach Mike Peterson said, I've got no idea what positions you play. And he said, and if I don't know, the other team's got no chance. Right, yeah, exactly right. Which makes it very uh, positionless and he has the ability to really play different lineups. That is his strength, the versatility of his options in lineups. And with Carter on the bench, Ari McDonald will get an extended look here. The third overall pick as she corrals that offensive rebound and a full reset on the shot clock because Laney did have possession. Bradford with the left, no good, but a late foul on Onion Wade. Bradford has just found her way to get to the rim. And very quietly, as this third quarter is coming to a close, the Atlanta Dream could build this lead back up to seven, depending on these free throws from Bradford. She misses the first. Bradford, the seventh overall pick in 2015 by the Sparks, went to Central Michigan. Made history. Yeah, first ever player from Central Michigan to be drafted in the W. Misses on both, and Laney corrals the rebound. There is a one second differential between shot clock and game clock. Liberty could hold for the last shot here. Eight to shoot. Ionescu thought about a long three, pulled it down, gets it out to Laney for another wing three, no good, in and out. Only way they couldn't get the rebound, and that's the way the third quarter will come to a close. The Dream with a five-point lead. We're set up for another great one here at Barkley Center. New York Liberty Basketball on Yes is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. More ways to win. No points for New York. The last 349 of the third quarter and Jules 18 turnovers leading to 20 Atlanta Dream points. What do they have to do here in this fourth quarter to seal the deal and get their sixth win of the season? Well, the turnovers are never a good thing and we've talked about that a lot and I think you've got to avoid those droughts too to go three and a half minutes in a drought and to not be able to do much offensively is a problem when you're playing an Atlanta team that can really score. Uh, but yeah, they're going to have to get something from everyone 
in the last quarter here and continue to get Laney involved and Onion Wade has to get some touches and we haven't gotten much from the inside players. I, I gotta be honest, we look at Shook, she's only got three points. Stokes only has four points. I'd like to see them get some easy ones and Ionescu has struggled throughout this entire game and yet they are still only within five. So it really goes to show that they've got some weapons, but limit the turnovers, take care of the basketball here in the fourth quarter and the rest will come and you've got to get stops. It always starts on the defensive end. When they went on that run, it was defense. Referees talking to both. Mike Peterson doesn't look happy, whatever that conversation was about. Right, when we're not sure. We cannot eavesdrop. We are not down at the scorer's table. One and so one, one, free, one throw. free throw. One and one free throw. Hey, good job <laughs> out of you, partner. I didn't know you did that on the side. Little lip reading. <laughs> Jules Viani Brain, lip reader. Not typically what I do, but you know, <laughs> I try to do what I can. <laughs> hey, put your vibe out there. You never know. Someone could hire you as a lip reader. You read it as well. Now that must be what they're talking about. But, or looking at. But what I'm is the sure. play that I mean the third quarter ended? Exactly. Was there a foul on that rebound at the end of the third quarter? Hopefully we're gonna get some kind of explanation from the officials so we could convey it to our viewers. Again, Mike Peterson was not happy uh, as Jazz, Jazz Jones yeah. is about to take a free throw here. And she makes it, and she'll get another. I'm wondering if there was some kind of technical foul or something that we did not, we weren't privy to. Didn't notice anything at the end of the third quarter. Or something spoken, something. Right. And that's what it appears like it could have been. So that could loom large for the Liberty here in the fourth quarter as they're able to shave two points off that five point lead with the clock stopped. So there you go. There was a foul at the end of the third quarter. And that was just cleaning that up. A bullet pass by Bradford, picked off by Laney. And Sabrina Inescu guarded by Courtney Williams. That hasn't gone very well for Ionescu during this game. Held to just three points. One for five from the field. Onion Wade has been a different story. She leads the Liberty with 25, which is a career high for her. Yeah, Williams has pestered Sabrina Ionescu out the wazoo, and that's been hard. And then on the other end, she's been scoring and making it look so easy. Courtney Williams, eight of 14 now, 17 points. She leads the way. And She'll have to pick up the slack with Kennedy Carter and Tiffany Hayes on the bench not with only, injuries. Not only that, Chris, she's got eight rebounds and six assists to go with 17 points. So talk about a complete game from Williams. That time her pass deflected by Jazz Jones and Laney's able to control here. Liberty getting stops, but not getting the buckets to go along with those stops. Nice move there by Jazz Jones, one-handed. Yeah, good to see her assertive and taking it at her defender. Nice little floater. She had a career-high 24 in her rookie season down in the bubble, but offensively, not off the ground so far this season, but other teammates are carrying the Liberty offensively. So Jazz doesn't have to provide too much offense. 
Her forte is on the defensive side of the ball. That pass goes through Laney's hands. Another turnover. Yeah, a forced skip pass. An easier pass that situation. Sammy Wickham back into the game. She replaces Benijah Laney. So Laney getting a little rest. She's getting coached up over there by Dustin Gray. Williams this time steps behind the three-point line. Doesn't get that one to go, but right inside that line, Jules, she is automatic. That's her game. Ten to shoot here. Ionescu working on Odyssey Sims. Doesn't get that one to fall, and she is now one for six. It's been a rough shooting day for Sabrina. Nice position inside, but active hands once again by Whitcomb. They reward her on the wing, and she connects! Sammy Whitcomb again from downtown. She is four or five from distance. She is not from there. I mean, she gets them. She's making them. And they've typically been in transition. Now fighting through the screen, trying to get to Tiffany Hayes, who's back into the game after limping out of the game in the third quarter. So that's good news for Atlanta. Kennedy Carter still on the sidelines, though. Jazz Jones taking Tiana Hawkins to the goal. Doesn't get the shot to fall, though. Would have been the Liberty's first lead since the first quarter. Nice look inside to Hayes. Stokes late getting over. And Hayes once again favoring that left ankle, it seems. But she'll head to the free throw line, looking for three the old-fashioned way. Nice backdoor cut here from Hayes. You overplayed like that, and that's just using your brain. And it's a great, a great pass. Hayes connects. Came in averaging just over 17 points per game. Second on the team. She's had a much better second half here. They'll stay with Liberty 12 to shoot and check that. She's first on the team as Hayes, averaging just under 18 points as Kylie Shook comes back into the game. Hayes in her ninth year out of UConn. Finding Shook inside. Shook can't get it to fall, though. And now she is one for five from the field. Like I said earlier, there has not been much from the inside players offensively. Jazz Jones lost her footing, and that's easy. As we're going to get a replay here. Don't count that bucket just yet. Jazz Jones said she was pushed by Courtney Williams before that bucket was hit, so the referees are going to take a look at this. Jones just fighting through that screen. Oh, yeah. She got hit. In the face, and so they'll, tech, they'll take a look at this. As they were walking off the floor, a couple dream players thought that there was a little acting involved here, but no, she did get hit by Williams. It looked like it was a basketball play off the dribble though here, but she did hit her in the face. It is, an, it, it is an inadvertent play, but they may call a foul. Could be just a regular player foul. Well, Jazz is in the huddle here. She might be bleeding, too. And that is Randy Richardson who is making the call. My and guess is it's a common foul, but we'll see. We will hear from Ron Kish as to what the call is, the PA announcer here at Barclays Center. as Jackie Jamelos coaching up Jazz Jones there.
No official word yet. A technical foul now on Courtney Williams as Sammy Wickham shoots the technical. Oh, it's interesting. I was wrong. I did think it was going to be a common foul because they thought it was a basketball kind of play, but it didn't hit her in the face. They're very cognizant of that. And they still counted Williams' bucket there, so 72-68. Just under six minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Liberty made only two of their last 12 shots. They have to get it going here. Onion Wade had it going in the first half. Finds Wickham in the corner. Quick trigger three, and it's good. Wickham once again, five of six now from the land of the three. She has really turned, turned it on from distance. They've got to keep finding Wickham. Has the hot hand, and as you said in the first half, partner with Onion Way, they ride that hot hand. Nice move inside by Hayes, and she has the answer. Coming up on five minutes to play here. Nice ball movement by the Liberty. Shook out to Onion Wade. Thought about the three and then is blocked by Elizabeth Williams. They've done a better job on Onion Wade in the second half. Pull up Jay Courtney Williams. And that's the problem with Williams. If you miss a shot, she is one of the best rebounding guards I said in the league. She'll go after that rebound as a guard and just go the full length of the court. Pull she up. is three assists shy of a triple double. And speaking of triples, Sabrina Ionescu hits her second field goal of the game. Six points for her and the lead down to two. Now good to see her get rolling there. And she does come up with big shots, as does that young woman. Big shot court once again. Oh, Courtney Williams is a gamer. I mean, in crunch time, she wants the ball. We've seen it over the years. Sammy Wickham out to Michaela Onion Wade for three. No good. Jazz Jones with the weak side rebound, and we're going to stay here. Foul on the dream. On Hayes, I believe, here. So 78 74, Atlanta with 4.02 left to go in the fourth quarter. We got a great finish set up for you here at Barkley Center. Oh, we're back, and Michaela Onyanwede has been having a day herself. She's been tremendous. She's got 25 points right now and has been just looking for her shot, getting it done in a variety of ways. And you got to really love her aggressiveness, not playing like a rookie. She's knocked down a bunch of shots from the perimeter, too. That's an area of her game where she's improved. She's 4 for 10 from distance, but boy, they need her to continue to come up big here down the stretch. She's been limited more in the second half by Atlanta, but she's overall had a terrific performance. Dream outscoring the Liberty 13-12 here in the fourth quarter. And those 13 points, courtesy of Courtney Williams and Tiffany Hayes, they've combined for all the points here in the fourth. Williams has eight, Hayes with five. Two of the more veteran players for them. Williams with 23 overall, Hayes with 10 after a slow first half. She had just two points at halftime. Quick trigger for Ionescu, no good. And Shook not able to get that board. Time ticking away here for the Liberty. They need stops, they need buckets. Ten to shoot. Courtney Williams using the screen from Elizabeth Williams and connects a long two for Courtney Williams. Onion Wade is getting stuck behind the screen. Courtney Williams is lighting up because that's her shot. That's her wheelhouse. You cannot get stuck behind the screen. 12 for 20 from the field as Ionescu gets stripped by Odyssey Sims. And the veteran point guard slows things down. Calling the foul there on Laney. She's not happy. Step aside here, just under three minutes to play. Liberty have work to do to win this one against the Dream. 
Tomorrow afternoon on Yes, Don't Miss the Yankee Series finale with the Detroit Tigers starting at 1 on Pix 11 and streaming on Amazon Prime Video. Plus, start and end your game day on Yes with the Yankees pregame beginning at 12.30 in the postgame after the final out. Liberty can't get over the hump. They tied the game at 58, 60, and 67, but they never were able to retake the lead. Now they trail by six. And another offensive rebound by Courtney Williams. And the Dream could extend this lead once again. It's her 11th rebound, Chris. Billings now with the rebound. She can't get her shot to fall. Liberty need a bucket here. Courtney Williams teetering on a triple-double here. Laney bullying her way into the paint and can't get the turnaround to fall. One you wish you could get back. She had the height advantage. Using her body to body out Williams in the paint. But just didn't have the right angle on that bank shot. Eight seconds to shoot here with two minutes to play in the fourth. Good D there by Onion Wade. Both sides of the floor. The rookie from UCLA has had herself a night. As Shook finally gets a bunny to fall. And the lead is down the four. Great job running the floor. I mean, New York hasn't gotten a chance to do it enough. But when they do, they can be toxic. Laney has now started to guard Courtney Williams. And a foul on Billings. That's a big call, an offensive foul on Monique Billings. Kylie Shook running the floor, getting ahead of the pack. And great strength here, keeping the ball in hand. Odyssey Sims guarding Ionescu Sims on her fourth WNBA team. As Onion Wade hits the three! The veteran from UCLA gives the ball back to the Liberty, and the rookie from UCLA cuts the lead down to one. Clutch shot from the rookie. Tiff Hayes trying to keep her hot streak going here in the second half, but she gives to Courtney Williams. Baseline jumper. This time no good, and Ionescu with the rebound. Under a minute to play here at Barkley Center. Another close game. Ionescu drives baseline. Gets blocked, though, by Elizabeth Williams. It'll stay here with the Liberty. 14 seconds to shoot. Boy, Elizabeth Williams has been a force inside for the Atlanta Dream. Anyone who gets in her territory gets a swatch. She's really been tremendous. Laney tied up in the corner, works her way around. And she's fouled by Hayes. The Liberty with their opportunity to take the lead for the first time since the first quarter with Laney at the foul line. That's what needed to happen. It needed to be someone who was going to attack the basket, and why not Laney? Laney has done it throughout the day, and she loves the physicality of it. The bench, of course, loves it. That's the way to get yourself to the line. Once again, the New York Liberty looking to start 4-0 at home for the first time since 2013 and for the fifth time in franchise history. Laney, good on both. First lead since 13 to 12, and the Liberty on a 7-0 run, and Mike Peterson wants to talk it over with his squad. 46 and change left in the fourth quarter, and the Liberty have themselves a one-point lead, Jules. What a shock, we have another close game. Uh, we've had a lot of close games, and really kudos to New York for this 7-0 run this quarter in very appropriate moments, and a lot of that had to do with getting some stops, and I've talked about that throughout this game. Getting those stops has been pivotal because then they've been able to execute at the other end, but just the grit, the fire, and resolve here from this team. A player like Onion Wade stepping up as a rookie, and just everybody kind of playing their role. And a lot of the three-point barrage today has been from the rookie out of UCLA, New York, 13 of 29, Jules. She's been incredible. I mean, she's put herself in a position to score, and it hasn't just been her. It's been some other players as well. It's been Wickham. It's been Shook. It's truly been a barrage of threes, and this is what Walt Hopkins wanted to do with his system. This was created for shooters, people that can knock them down, and that's who he has on the floor at all times. When you have five people on the floor,
that can knock it down. You can play a wide open, spread the floor out type of basketball, and it's a fun brand to play. We've seen it in the NBA, and we've seen it infiltrate the women's game as well. You could see what Mike Peterson wanted to do today, constantly blitzing Sabrina Ionescu, taking her out of the game. She has just six points on two of 10 shooting. But when that happens, Jules, other players have to step up. And Michaela Onyenwede has been terrific today. And this crowd into it. They are up chanting defense as Hayes tries baseline. And she's tied up by Whitcomb. And a jump ball. What defense there by Sammy Whitcomb. This is a great job. She's actually trailing it nicely. Catches up. Good showing by Onion Wade as she just showed and then retreated back to her player. Good communication there. Tapped out to Courtney Williams. 33 seconds in the game. 12 to shoot here as Williams goes around the defense. Finds Hayes. Met there and stopped by Wickham. And Wickham gets pushed from behind by Hayes in a foul call. Sammy Wickham getting rewarded here for all of her hard work this afternoon at Barclays Center. And this is that grit. I mean, you have to just tip your cap to Sammy Wickham and just the hustle, the, the wanting of that ball more than her opponent. Terrific job here coming down with it and then getting herself to the foul line. Atlanta has missed their last six shots, Jules. I'm sorry I cut you off there. There is so much about this run here at the end is, is pure grit and hustle from New York. Wickham good on one of two. Rebound batted around. Shot clock off. Atlanta calls a timeout. We'll keep it right here with 23.8 seconds left. A 20-second timeout taken by Mike Peterson. His team down two. They've led most of this game. We mentioned this lead is the Liberty's first since it was 13-12. They trail by as much as 13. And as my partner, Jules, said, it's the grit of this team and the never quit attitude that we've seen this whole season, even in that game, that loss to the Washington Mystics, they never gave up in that game down in DC. And it all comes down to that blue collar mentality that Coach Hopkins wants this team's identity to be. And that's what they have been here today. And they've shown a lot of resolve and poise, actually. The, the word that comes to my mind is the poise of this team. Nobody got rattled when they were down and they've really just climbed their way out of hole after hole to take this lead. Well, we are set up for an exciting finish. Another one here at Barclays Center to start this 25th anniversary season for the league and the New York Liberty. As the dream, looking to work to get an open look. Elizabeth Williams on Kylie Shook. She's blocked once. Oh, and her stick to Gets the shot to fall, follows her own miss. Good defense there by Shook, but Williams is there to tie it up with 10 seconds to play. See here, nice interior passing. And Williams stays with it. But Shook with a great tip. Better hustle from Williams, though. She was all over this ball, and she wanted it. And that is just tremendous from Williams. And you've said it throughout this game, she's been real tenacious underneath for Atlanta and she won't give up now 10 points she has eight boards and she's been a force and it's a tie game here so clearly expect to see a good shot taken here and drawn up you want to see probably Laney with the basketball I would think that Laney would be the one how about these exciting games we've had so far at Barclays Center, Jules? The first year that the Liberty are here full time. They had that one game in 2019 here against the Seattle Storm. But this is the first full season after the pandemic, of course, and we've had ourselves some good basketball to call here, partner. We sure have. And there's a lot to be said about being in your home arena and being in New York City and in the heart of it. and just the energy that you get as a player, and I can speak from a player's perspective. It, there's nothing like it, being in your own home arena. 
And we got to give a lot of credit to these fans here. They are coming out to support their New York Liberty. They get Liberty loud during these games, and they might have an opportunity to raise the roof once again. See what they threw up here out of the timeout, Jules, to get an open look. Multiple options for sure, but I would expect to see Laney having touches. But listen, it could be anyone. They're all scorers out there. Ball gets into Laney. Working on Hayes. Laney in the lane. And she is denied by Elizabeth Williams. Two seconds, one second. Williams gets it off, but it doesn't go. And we are headed to overtime. Bonus basketball here. Exciting finish there, but we're gonna get some bonus basketball as we head to overtime, tied at 82. Wow, Elizabeth Williams, my goodness, Jules. And I thought Laney got away with a walk here. Look at that. She got away with a walk and couldn't execute out of it anyway. Good defense. That was excellent one-on-one -on -one defense. And again, Elizabeth Williams coming up with a huge block shot there. Got the ball to Courtney Williams, and Williams is who you wanted the ball with in their hands, and she couldn't finish. Great job by Sabrina Inescu defensively on that last shot by Williams. And when we come back, we will get bonus basketball overtime between the Dream and Liberty is next right here on Yes. You see Sabrina taking it out and Laney bobbled it a little bit, whether it was a double dribble or a, uh, a walk. But the defense from Williams to Williams. And this sends us into overtime. But that was very good defense, one-on-one -on -one defense. And then the help from the other side from Atlanta. That has been true to form throughout their, their day. Tiffany Hayes, the reason why Laney went right after her, she has five fouls. She's the only one in dire foul trouble on both squads. Sammy Whitcomb and Benajah Laney each have two apiece for the Liberty. As Odyssey Sims controls the tip here in overtime. Atlanta led this one by as many as 13. Liberty clawed their way back. Enjoyed a two point lead. That was wiped away by that Elizabeth Williams short shot right before the buzzer. And here we are. Oh, Bonus basketball, <laughs> yes. It's been a tough game for Sabrina Inescu, as we mentioned, just two of 10 from the floor, but one of her three pointers was extremely helpful as Shook can't get that one in the lane to fall. And they just could use some of those inside shots to fall. Coach Hopkins sticking with this lineup. Rotation over there to Hayes by Ionescu. She gets it inside to Billings. From the corner of the paint, she can't get it to go, but Williams, another offensive rebound. There she is, and she's a guard. She is a guard who tracks rebounds better than any guard I've ever seen. That's her 12th board, five to shoot as Sims. She can't get it to fall. And another offensive rebound. This time it's Williams, but she loses control. Laney takes it the other way, uses her body, and she is fouled, and she will head to the line. A nice job by Laney, and she saw, hey, let me go hard at this, at Courtney Williams, because you know if she goes hard here, she's not gonna be able to take the charge because she's not inside the restricted line or outside the restricted line, but good job. Well, she they were lucky there, Chris. That yes. Three different opportunities for Atlanta to get second and third chances. And if that happened at the end of regulation, we'd be out of here, partner. Yep. Liberty 18 of 20 from the line. Now 19 of 21. They've done a great job getting there. The Liberty have 21 free throws. The Dream have taken just eight. And Liberty now with a two point lead. Does that disappear? No. Too strong there by Hayes on the three. Every possession, very coveted. Another set of the double. Yes, another double this time. Great eyes by Ionescu to Onion Wade. She doesn't hit the three. That was almost all the way down there, but it pops out. Onion Wade now 
five of 12 from distance. But because so much attention is paid on Sabrina, that opens things up for her teammates. Williams thought about taking the three there, 10 to shoot. Another O board. This time, finding Hayes from the other side, no good from three, and hustle there by Whitcomb, tried to bound it off of Billings, and Ionescu controls. Whitcomb takes the three, no good, tried to hit that over Williams, she altered that shot, and very quietly, guess what, Jules? Benajelini has 20 points. She gets it done every night. Seventh straight game to start the season. Shot there by Sims ties things up. Such great touch by Odyssey Sims, and she knots this game up at 84 with just over two minutes to play. And Odyssey Sims has ice water in her veins as well. I mean, there's a lot of players that Atlanta has that are not afraid to take big shots in crunch situations, and Sims has been in the league for a long time, the Baylor superstar. Won a national championship her sophomore season with Brittany Griner. Jules, what do you think the coaches are discussing right now with their respective squads? I think for both teams, it's a tie game here. I mean, you've got to be able to draw up some good quick hitters, getting good looks. It's not rocket science down the stretch here. You've got to also get some stops. I mean, that's always important. It's every possession, though, that matters a lot. I think Walt Hopkins is probably telling these guys, too, to stop giving up so many offensive rebounds. Those extra possessions are really hurting New York at times but it's New York ball, so you know that it's about a play drawn up here to get a good look. Any There's still a lot of time left. Any surprise from you that we're not seeing Ari McDonald get some minutes here, or just, it's Mike Peterson just going with his vets down the I, I'm not sure that he's fully confident in her just yet. She's, she's still young, she's still finding her way in the lead. But I think she'll be okay, it's just he's going with vets. If the Dream end up winning this game, we could talk all we want about Courtney Williams, but Elizabeth Williams deserves a ton of credit as Sims tries a long three. Rebound goes through the legs of Kia Stokes, but then bounds off of Williams. It'll be Liberty Ball. And you're right, because Elizabeth Williams has been a force underneath, and we've seen New York struggle with some bigger players, and she has added that depth in the front court. 11th all-time in career blocks in NCAA history, 426. Reiner, the all-time leader with 748. And she's a defensive-minded big, mind you. She was National Defensive Player of the Year back in 2015 in college. Great ball movement by the Liberty, leads to another three from Onion Wade, and a three-point lead matching their largest of the game for the Liberty. Boy, Onion Wade has picked huge moments here tonight to make shots. Williams again, this time no good, rebound to Ionescu, she pulls it down, and like a veteran, she's slowing things down. There's no need to rush a shot if you don't have a good one. And an offensive foul called on Ionescu there. Maybe a push on Odyssey Sims trying to create space. And just, yeah, she does push her off a bit. Or oh, that was Hayes. My apologies. Yeah, that's a frustration play by Sabrina. 43 seconds left to go here in overtime at Barkley Center. A tremendous game between the Dream and the Liberty. And how about that? Courtney Williams, talk about ice in her veins. She ties the game at 87 with a three. I mean, she doesn't even touch rim. I mean, when she makes her shots, it is nothing but net. 50% from the floor. 13 for 26. Ionescu thought about the three. Onion Wade, can she do it again? No, that time too strong. 12.6 seconds left and a timeout with 9.8 by the Dream. So they'll have a chance to win this ball game. 
and a stagnant possession from New York. I didn't like the offensive possession. And the play before that, Courtney Williams just pulls up, makes it look easy. Wickham just trails that on ball screen just a tiny bit. And Courtney Williams is the master at coming off on ball screens, at utilizing shoulder to shoulder and just getting her shot off so quickly. And she has that winner's mentality, always has. I mean, I watched her play in college a ton. And boy, for South Florida, she picked her biggest games of her life and career in college was against UConn, the top team in the country. That's just how she's always been. Fans Thursday night on Yes, catch the next Liberty game as the Seafoam Green battle the Las Vegas Aces back here at Barclays Center. Coverage starts at seven on Yes and streaming, of course, on the Yes app. And we have a great one here this afternoon. 87-87, just under 10 seconds to play here in overtime. Courtney Williams hits the three-pointer to tie this thing up at 87 after Michaela Onyenwede hit her sixth of the game. She's got 29 points, does the rookie out of UCLA. Her career high, season high coming into this game was 18. She had that on opening night against the Indiana Fever. She has 29 here this afternoon as Dee Dee Richards is getting set to check back in here for Sabrina Ionescu. So a little 14-3 pointers ties a franchise record the fourth time they did that second time this season. The Liberty have drilled 14 from downtown. They're shooting 42.4%. Dream here with a chance to win the ball game and it's in the right hands in Courtney Williams. She pulls the three and connects. Courtney Williams with 1.5 seconds hits the three. The ball was inbound, but Walt Hopkins wants a timeout here with 1.5. What a shot from Courtney Williams. How you don't switch that immediately, I, I don't know. I would have just had everybody switching no matter what here and Yes, it would have been a mismatch, but Kia Stokes should have switched out on her, given who she is and what she has done. Boy, she is just lethal. And the cool thing about the bigs for the Atlanta Dream, they have this way of thinking, Jules. If they set these screens, they look at those buckets by Hayes, by Courtney Williams, by Kennedy Carter, whoever they set those screens for, they look at those buckets as their buckets because they're setting them up. And Elizabeth Williams and Monique Billings have been doing that all game long. And you see the results. It's given the dream this three-point lead with 1.6 left. And it's how Courtney Williams reads it, too. It's how Odyssey Sims reads it. They read those screens well. You can tell the pick-and-roll game has been practiced among this dream squad. And they just have the ability. We've talked about the versatility, the options with the lineup. And they have really gotten it done down the stretch. And, and that's a tough dagger to New York, who really played their guts out here. They still have a second here. They still have some time, plenty of time for a catch and shoot. But you need a three here. So you draw up a play for a three. And Atlanta's going to have to switch everything from the three-point line. Because you give up a two here if you're Atlanta. Interesting to see who gets a touch here for New York. Uh, Sammy Whitcomb will trigger it in here for the Liberty. Ionescu with the left doesn't get it to fall, and that's the way it'll end. 90 to 87, the dream with the hard fought victory. But the Liberty, as you said, Jules, earlier, a gritty effort out of them. 13 points down early in this game. They come all the way back, force overtime. They just fall a little bit short, and we see that they missed Natasha Howard tonight. What a heartbreaker for New York. I mean, what a tremendous victory for Atlanta. I mean, they hung on to the lead most of the game, but for New York, you just have to tip your cap to the way that Atlanta was able to play and learn from it and move forward. But what an effort between both teams. That's going to wrap it up from Barclays Center. Once again, the final score, 90-87 in favor of the Atlanta Dream. Join us again Thursday when the New York Liberty hosts the Las Vegas Aces. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. on the S Network and streaming on the S app. 
for Julianne Viani Brain and our entire tremendous Yes Network crew. I'm Chris Sheeran saying so long, everyone. We'll see you next time.